Welcome back to the program. If you knew today what tomorrow's consumers would prefer, how would you change the way you make decisions? Hmm, that would be interesting. Well, we spoke to two experts who are in Singapore for the two-day global brand forum, which ends today. Oh, Faith Popcorn is recognized as America's foremost trend expert. She is advisor to the Fortune 500 and businesses around the world. In fact, Fortune has even called her the Nostradamus of marketing, and she is known to have a 95% accuracy rate. And Martin Lindstrom, a marketing prodigy, started his first marketing firm at the age of 12 and sold it a year later. By 27, he had co-founded both Europe's and Australia's Asia's largest web development advertising agencies. And they told Suzanne what branding is all about. You know, I b bought with me a rock. And, and how much would you pay for it? <laughs> is it a special rock? It's very special for me. <laughs> well, this special um, to you, uh, well, how much would you sell it to me at? Whatever price you're ready for. Two dollars. Two dollars. We have a deal. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you're right. Because what's so interesting is that this rock, you know, supposedly is a very special rock picked up in 1969, I believe, on Moon by Neil Armstrong. One out of two rocks. Mm -hmm. And what's so interesting is that you probably want to pay more for it now, right? Oh, uh, obviously. But right. I haven't changed it. It's not like I've done any magic and mm. changed it in my pockets, right? What's so interesting is we now become emotionally engaged with a piece of rock. Something is ordinary. It's not beautiful, it's right? It's a piece of history, then. It is a piece of history. But everything has a history. Think about that. And branding is all about creating emotions around things. And the more emotionally engaged you are with it, the higher price you want to pay for it. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful rock. Do you want it? Can I see it? Here you are. If you want Thank it. you very much. I love my rock. <laughs> so what do you think about a branding as well, Faith? You see, I, uh, the way we're looking at it is a, uh, we're looking at a new model about weaving a brand into the culture. So where I met my rock through Martin, it means a lot to me. It's kind of a one-on-one -on -one thing. What my rock stands for is transparency. Does it donate to charity? You know, how, how it lives in the culture. Where, what's the retail space of my rock? So it's a complete 360 of mm -hmm. this rock and how it comes to me. And it is a one-on-one -on -one marketing concept, but I think that's how people are buying. And we're thinking that television commercials is just so suspect. We don't believe in that anymore. Mm -hmm. So how do you make that one-on-one -on -one connection at the same time having a mass appeal? Because that's what you want to do. Actually, I don't think you want to have a mass appeal. I want to believe that I discovered this rock with Martin. So I want to believe that it came to me. So what is the blog that it's on? Can I write to my rock? Can I say, dear rock, you know, I'm not feeling like connected today. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a connection this way and how it just seeps deep, deep, deep down into the culture. That's how branding is going to work in the future. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting when you talk about that because if you go to Japan, you'll see that Kit Kat have an enormous success. And the reason why is because Kit Kat pronounced in Japanese is Kitokatsu, oh. which means good luck. And actually what they've done is they developed a special website where you can write in your good luck wishes before you go to the exam. And people are doing that in millions. And that's the reason why it's so popular right now, because people are emotionally engaged with the brand. It's exactly like a what superstition saying. around the brand. It's a real engagement around the brand. It's a belief that a brand can really perform for you. So when you put on your maybe your Nikes, you know, you think you can run faster, you can perform better. Mm -hmm. There's a real message there. But from your observation, you just mentioned um, Japanese are uh, strategizing in a special way such that Kit Kat can resonate with them. But um, is there such thing as an Asian brand, you think, then? Oh, definitely. I think there is. Uh, I think the number one point of difference from Asian brands to the rest of the world is that you're much more sensory here. What's so interesting is that Japanese senses are about 100% more sensitive than the rest of the world, and here in Singapore, about 50% higher than in North America and in Europe. That means we're much more affected by a smell, a sound, a touch. And that's the reason why we really care about quality. So okay. what we're seeing here, for example, we take Shanghai Tang or other brands, uh, Benin Tree. They're actually very sensory, and brands in the future will be sensory. So I think we'll see a new wave of brands spinning out of Asia into the Western mm -hmm. world in a major way. Well, when I say Asian brand, um, what crosses your mind? Is it just a brand from Asia, or does it actually say something? I think Asians are becoming much more engaged. It used to be something just at work, like Sony, maybe it worked. And post-World War II, we were supposed to like <coughs> have more generic. Asia didn't want to say, I'm Asian. Mm -hmm. And I think now Asian has a quirkiness 
a character to it. I think of Hello Kitty, you know, something mm. adorable, something, the anime, you, you're in film, you know, now, a special kind of film. I think that avatars will come out of Asian brands, becoming somebody else. So I think there's a little sense of humor about Asian brands now, and it makes it much less um, just, it's all about performance, but more about personality. And I don't think Asia had as much of a personality as it has had in the last couple of years. Well, Faith, you have been uh, um, called the, um, you know, the crystal ball gazer, very accurate with your predictions. I just no. look into my rock. <laughs> <laughs> into a new rock. Well, looking at Asia today and also the rest of the world, what do you predict um, for 2007? Well, for tw 2007, we, we actually look a decade out. So we're seeing this idea of a brand has to stand for something. It has to support society. It has to be about renewability. And a, a trend that we have in our trend bank for many years that's just getting bigger and fatter and bigger and fatter is a trend called egonomics, which is the personalization of the brand. How do I adapt my brand? Mm -hmm. Outside here, we saw a soda machine, and it was all graffitied up. You know, there's initials on it and messages on it. That's what I want my brand to be, something like a little palette that I can pass down that's all about me. Mm -hmm. How important is trend when it comes to uh, strategizing? Uh, for brand. How important is what? How important is trend forecast? Incredibly important. But I also think there's one thing we should have in mind. You cannot just tr change your behavior because now something is trendy tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why Faith and her team is working 10 years at advance. Because brands need to be solid. You know, everything is unconscious. Or it's happening in strange ways around us. Mom and dad is being divorced right now. We have terrorism, we have crime. So I want some solid, solid values in my life. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why brands always know they can be around me and always know they're there. Mm -hmm. So if you change your direction all the time, that's dangerous too. So that's the good news about mm -hmm. you know, predicting trends so far ahead. Brands can adapt slowly, but it's very important that you adapt to trends. No doubt about that. You know, what we do for companies is, you know, a brand comes to us and says, you know, what, what shall I do? How shall I position? And we see the brand is going this way, but the culture and the future is going this way. So you have to lay the brand on the future, and that's what futurism truly is about. Mm -hmm. What frustrates you the most when you see companies, um, they are not going the full potential and branding themselves in a way that they can to bring in the big bucks? Because it's a short-term, um, profit-driven, of course <coughs> brands have to be profitable, but the short-term, you know, is it right for the next quarter, is it right for the next year, and it's very hard, we're not trained as chairmen and chairwomen to see the, the future. And one beautiful thing about Asia, and what I, I've adapted since I started my company in 74, is the 500-year-old brand. And I believe in the 500-year-old brand, that a brand has to continue, and you have to do the right thing for the brand and the next group of management mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. I think there's another thing too, which is interesting, and that is people don't dare to take chances anymore. No. In big corporations, they're so afraid of being fired tomorrow. Therefore, they're more thinking about the retirement than anything else. But brands need to have an edge. If they don't have an edge, they become blend brands. Yes. And no one can relate to blend no. brands. No, if you are just nice but you have no personality, I can't relate to you. Mm -hmm. And that is but that's not your brand. problem. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say that. That was our chat with branding giants Faith Popcorn and Martin Lindstrom on what trends to expect in 2007 and what brand is really all about. And you know what, it's interesting that they mentioned how you have an emotional attachment. I mean, we all have favorite brands of certain mm -hmm. items for sportswear, for gadgets, and it's because it may not be better than the other one, it's just that you like it for certain reason, you know, and... And I have to say, those catchy phrases and slogans really do the work like Nike, just do it. Yeah, well... Something okay, you now you know how, what to do. If you have a brand that you need to sell, you need to get the consumers to form an attachment to it and then they'll be lifelong, loyal customers.